let's just jump to the big dog, Aramco. Uh, I keep seeing everyone's talking about that. Yep. And they're like, Aramco is going to do Bitcoin mining. My understanding, uh, again, this is a rumor because yep. they're already piloting stuff. They're already trying stuff. Uh, but let's say hypothetically they came out and they publicly said, we are going to do this. They, I believe, are the largest oil and gas yes. kind of energy company. They're the, the largest world. company in the world. Yeah. Okay. Um, what would be the impact if they publicly kind of stood behind doing this type of uh, effort? Um, I, I think from the American side, it wouldn't have a lot of impact. It would not. Yeah, from the oil and gas companies, because it's just different cultures. Uh, you have Vision, like 2030, I think it is, where they're trying to diversify out of their oil and gas assets. Mm -hmm. What better way than to take your oil and gas assets and get Bitcoin into the kingdom, mm -hmm. from my personal perspective, from a financial side of things. But uh, internationally, though, I think it would have some, like, pretty cool implications mm -hmm. if, if they're doing that at scale. Why would the American companies not care if Aramco said they were doing it? Um, like it, it doesn't provide like, uh, I think when Paul Tudor Jones and Stanley Druckenmiller were like, we're yes, buying Bitcoin, right. there's like career risk removed for yes. Wall Street. Would Aramco, you think, because it's just not an American company? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I, more along the American company line of things, it's just not within the culture subset. Now, I might be wrong, but like to me, it wouldn't be, like it, that's not the equivalent of like Apple coming out and saying like, we think Bitcoin's good publicly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like the same amount of implications that would have. Is there a oil and gas company in America that you think would have the like Paul Tudor Jones, Stanley Druckenmiller effect if they came out and said that they were doing it? Yeah, I think if ExxonMobil would like owned it and was like, no, no, we're not selling the gas. We're, we're using it. Here's the operations. Here's what it is. And like publicly pushing it. I think that would have a lot of people like go like, going, huh? Yeah. But and they're kind of like hesitant. Yeah. yeah. But it, it seems like the open secret in the oil and gas industry is everyone's trying it. You cannot have a conversation today about natural gas without talking about Bitcoin. Yeah. Do we think Russia's doing this? Like as a nation? But just they I'm got sure a lot, they got a lot of natural gas on. they're exporting, right? Like, and again, I am not an expert yeah. on, the, yeah, yeah. on oil or natural gas. Uh, but I would think that if you are a surplus or if you have a surplus yep. and you're exporting a mm -hmm. lot, uh, sure, you can make money doing that. Yep. And they have the pipelines, all stuff. But like if you figure out a way to very profitably consume it on site, you probably will at least like run the math. Oh, yeah. And, and the thing is, too, Russia and uh, has, has some of the most largest amount of flare gas in the world. They have these massive... Um, natural gas treatment facilities so that's where you take the methane and then you strip out because it's natural gas so it's not pure methane there's propane ethane butane and so in these processes there's just so much extra waste and so they're flaring like hundreds of megawatts centralized facilities in russia and you can see it like one satellite now when you say centralized uh they're going in there, drilling in all these places. They're getting the natural yep. gas. They're bringing it to a central facility, and they're lighting it on fire. They're treating it, and then they have this extra amount of gas that they don't really want because they're going after another subsect of the gas, and they just have these massive flares going on. And so rather than flare, mine, and, yep. like, you're rich. And, and that's the biggest, like, drawback and complaint about flare gas Bitcoin mining is it's fragmented. You have all of these different, like, 1 or 5 megawatt, 10 megawatt locations all over the place. You can't have a centralized 100 megawatt facility like you could on grid. And, like, that would be an instance of having massive scale. So Russia has this centralized component. Does America, do we not have these yeah. centralized facilities? No, we don't, we're, we're pretty efficient on in terms of treating the gas and making sure we pick up every drop. Got it. And so if this became more prevalent in the oil and gas industry, do you think people would be incentivized to build the centralized facilities? Absolutely. It just, well, so no, so we have the centralized facilities. It's just when we're treating the gas, mm -hmm. we take up every single, we're super efficient with oh, it. Oh, got it. So we're yeah. not, we don't act at the centralized facilities. We don't need to burn it because we're using everything. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we are, we're extremely efficient. Russia, everything like that. They're kind of lackadaisical. Got it. And so the only reason why we're flaring is because we don't want to move it at all. It's not, we don't get something out of the process. Correct. Yeah. Okay.